What's up? My name is Technobo here for Troubleshoot and welcome back to another video. In this quick video, I'll be showing you how to optimize your computer for Grand Theft Auto 5. Of course, this video has been a while in the making, but it's something I've eventually come around to, especially because Grand Theft Auto is still showing its relevance in today's gaming scene. It's still one of the most popular games, so here's an optimization guide for it. Of course, this won't be absolutely everything you can squeeze even more out of your computer, and in the description down below you'll find related videos including Windows optimization guides for 10 and 11, NVIDIA, etc, etc. So with all of that out of the way, I'll be using the Steam version, though there isn't too much of a difference between all of the different versions of GTA 5 you can get for your PC. So let's start all the way at the beginning and get done with some simple Windows optimization. This isn't going to be as in-depth as the Windows optimization guides I mentioned earlier, so do check those out and come back here. And don't forget, before this video even begins, I do highly recommend updating your graphics driver and then Windows. And of course, it's very simple. I'm not going to go through explaining it here, but you can find links in the description down below if you need to download your NVIDIA or AMD graphics card driver, and I'm sure you understand Windows Update. To start, let's begin by optimizing the game in Windows itself. I'll open up Steam, locate GTA 5, right click, hover over manage, and then click browse local files. A new window will then open up, and this is where the game is installed. Now, of course, if you have any mods installed, you may be used to coming into this directory, and mods will negatively affect your performance in most cases. This includes third party mods that you could get from something like 5M. So do keep in mind, not only do different locations change the amount of FPS you're getting, but obviously third party mods that affect graphics, etc., etc. I'll locate and right click on GTA 5.exe and then click properties. In this new window, I'll head across to compatibility and make sure to check disable full screen optimizations. If you start receiving bad input latency, come back and uncheck this here, then click apply. Click change high DPI settings, tick the box at the very bottom and select application from the drop down. OK, apply and OK. Now I'll click at the very top here and copy the address. I'll hit start, type in GPU and open graphics settings. In this new window here, simply turn on hardware accelerated GPU scheduling if you have it available and look under graphics performance preference. Select desktop app from the drop down and then click browse. When this new window pops up, click at the top, paste in the address that we just copied and hit enter. Select GTA 5.exe and click add. Then, locate it on the list, select it, and click Options here. We'll be changing this to High Performance, and clicking Save. This will give you better FPS, especially if you're on a laptop or notebook, as it's forcing it to use your dedicated, powerful graphics card over the integrated one in any way. Then, we'll be heading back and home, and we'll be opening the Gaming tab over here. On the Xbox Game Bar tab, make sure that this is turned off unless you explicitly use some of the features that this provides you with. Then head across to game mode. We'll be turning this on as it'll gain you a couple of FPS. It's a nice little feature that works really well nowadays. Now let's do some general cleanup, cleaning up our game drive and our Windows drive. Hit start and type in disk cleanup and then click run as administrator. In this new window here, I'll be selecting C drive where Windows is and clicking OK. Wait for it to scan and a new window will pop up with temporary files that we can clear off of our PC happily. I'd make sure to have everything in here selected other than recycle bin as it could delete something you want to restore later. I'd recommend going through the recycle bin later and cleaning out everything except for what you want to keep. And of course, thumbnails down here as I like opening up folders with images and not having to wait for the thumbnails to generate. With these two options here unchecked, you can happily have everything checked and click OK to clean up unnecessary temporary files off of your computer, oftentimes saving you a couple of gigabytes. The reason we run that as admin is it lets you delete more Windows temporary files than just user temporary files, allowing us to save even more hard drive or SSD space. When it's run through to completion, if you have the game installed on another disk drive other than C, open up Disk Cleanup once again as administrator, and this time select the drive that you have the game installed on. Click OK, wait for it to scan, and select everything you're comfortable with. OK, delete files, and wait for it to run through to completion once again. At this point, we're now basically done with Windows optimization. Again, if you'd like to get far more in-depth, do check the description down below for in-depth guides on that. Finally, before we hop into the game, your PC has a limited amount of resources. The less you have using the resources, the more you have available for FPS and performance in the game. Open up Task Manager with Control Shift and Escape, and on the Processes tab, you'll be able to sort by CPU, Memory, and GPU to find out what's being taken up by what on your computer. 
The less you have running at the time of playing the game, the more FPS you're going to get while you're playing. Then head across to the startup tab at the very top and in here we'll be sorting by status. Everything that says enabled starts up automatically with your computer, slowing down the startup time and of course, heating up resources silently in the background. You can right click anything you don't want starting up with your windows and click disable to turn it off. Nice and simple. If you'd like to get really advanced, you can head across to services and click open services at the bottom. This is effectively the exact same thing, sorting by startup type, everything listed as automatic starts up with your computer. If you find something starting up with your computer that you don't want starting up with your computer, you can right click, click properties and simply change it from startup type automatic to startup type manual. This way you or a program will have to start up the service and it won't quietly eat up resources in your background. That is a little bit more advanced though. Now we're done with Windows optimization, let's get in game for an in-depth optimization. So just in the first mission here, as you can see, I'm averaging around 80, 70 to 100 FPS. Though as soon as I hit escape to bring up the options menu, things really go south. As you can see, my cursor is super jumpy. I'm getting 40 to like 10 FPS. It's really not good at all. If you find yourself in a state like this, it might be easier for you to quit to the main menu and then start adjusting your graphic settings there. Might have to go the long way around. There we go, going the long way around, I'm back in the main menu. Let's go into settings and down to graphics to get started. The display tab doesn't really have too much other than just some personal preference settings. So starting at the very top of the list here, DirectX should be 11, screen type should be full screen, resolution should match your screen's default resolution, in my case 2K, and the aspect ratio should be correct, 16 by 9 in my case. Having this set to auto sometimes results in a stretched image for me, which is kind of odd, but that is because I do play on an ultra wide. Then refresh rate should match the refresh rate of your monitor, and this you can find either on the box or by Googling the monitor's name. Output monitor, of course, is what screen it shows on. For me, one is correct. Now those really have too much of an impact other than playing in full screen. Right down here, where we get to the rest of the options, is where you'll either gain or lose a ton of FPS. In the description down below, you'll find a link to Gamers Nexus's breakdown of plus minus most of these settings, telling you the most impactful to the least impactful. So with my sources cited, I'll quickly run through them here from most impactful to least impactful. Do note that in 95% of cases, all of these settings here, the lower that you set them, the better your FPS is going to be in game. Of course, if the game starts to look really bad after changing something down, you're more than welcome to turn it up at the cost of one or two, maybe a few more FPS. It's really about the experience overall over the total FPS you're getting, as long as it's still playable. Starting from the very top, FXAA has very little to no impact on your game, so having this on or off is completely up to your preference. MSAA, however, is a really demanding option to have on, especially on the higher settings and or with NVIDIA TXAA on. I'd really recommend keeping this off unless you absolutely can't stand jagged edges and you absolutely need anti-aliasing. And that's of course if FXAA doesn't cut it for you. So FXAA on, MSAA off. Unless you're getting screen tearing when the top half of the screen renders before or after the bottom, resulting in a literal torn screen looking effect because having this on limits FPS and of course will introduce more input latency, sometimes quite dramatically. Pause game on focus loss is also relatively important if you're gonna be tabbing out quite a bit. If you turn this on, at least while in single player, the game will pause, allowing you to use the rest of your computer more comfortably without rendering the game full out while you're tabbed out of it. Population density, population variety, and distance scaling, as far as I understand, these top two only really apply to single player, maybe multiplayer as well, but of course having density down and distance scaling down will result in better FPS. Population variety, not so much unless you're absolutely trying to squeeze out the most VRAM possible. Why? Well, simply because more different kinds of play models being loaded at once needs a little bit more VRAM to work. As you can see, 3033 with everything maxed out and 2313 with everything set down to the bottom. So about 300 megs of VRAM saved. Population density and distance scaling have no effect on VRAM, but they will have an effect on FPS. 
Scrolling down further, now we get to the real meat of everything. So starting this next section from most impactful to least impactful, first of all, we have post effects. This game is filled with post processing effects and the higher that this is, the more FPS you can expect to lose. And I would think especially while you're in the options menu, as as soon as I pressed escape while in the single player campaign, everything just completely died. This is probably one of the options that caused that. Then we have grass quality next, and of course, in a shooter or racing game, depending on how you play it, you're not necessarily going to be staring at grass all the time, so having this set down as low as possible is really good. Something to note about this game is that having everything on ultra versus normal, there's really not too much of a big difference, especially if you're racing around or running around. You're going to get really different FPS while the game still looks really good no matter what you have this set to. Then next most important is shader quality and shadow quality. These have a pretty big impact on FPS, especially between normal and very high for the shader quality up here and in shadow quality between very high and high. Obviously, the lower these two settings are, the better FPS you can expect to get. I'd recommend having the shader quality on normal for the most FPS. Otherwise, on high, you can expect to lose 10 to 15 FPS, maybe. And shadow quality between high and normal is relatively the same, though pushing it up to very high will cost you about 8 FPS or so. So I'll leave this on, say, normal. Or maybe high. Then reflection quality. This does have a relatively large impact on FPS, though only by about 10 FPS or so between the top and the lowest settings here. The same goes for VRAM, there's not too much of a difference. Again, there's about 300 megs between the ultra and the normal settings here. So I'd usually leave this on normal and reflection MSAA off entirely or 2X if you really don't like jagged edges in reflections. Water quality wasn't listed on the Gamers Nexus benchmark, but I would expect it near water. Whenever you have this set to higher settings, you'll lose quite a few more FPS than in other locations. So you may want to leave this on normal or high, though do turn it down if you experience FPS drops while near rivers, oceans, etc, etc. And finally, into the section that really doesn't mean much for FPS, it's just user preference, we start with particle quality, which has a very small impact on FPS, though it may have a larger impact when lots of things are going on at once. Same goes for tessellation at the very bottom here. There's not really going to be a difference between a very high and normal. I'd leave this on about high or normal. And finally, the ones with basically no impact on FPS, we start with FXAA, which we already covered, distance scaling at 4K, shadow smoothness, and anisotropic filtering. So soft shadows, you can turn basically as high as you want. I'd probably use the NVIDIA technology as I have an NVIDIA graphics card. AMD users may want to choose AMD CHS. Most effects seem to have turned itself up. I'll put it back down to normal. Anisotropic filtering, absolutely no impact. You can have this on 8 or 16 very comfortably on modern graphics cards. Ambient occlusion should also have very little impact. You can leave this on normal or high. I'll leave this on high. And that really does it for the graphics settings. I'll hit space and escape. I don't want to restart quite just yet, but we'll head down to advanced graphics. Inside of here, we do have a couple of options, though the impact of these haven't really been benchmarked in many public places. Long shadows render in shadows from further away, as far as I understand, over more objects and things like that. I would assume that these would cause FPS drops if it's turned on. High resolution shadows obviously will cause FPS drops and high detail streaming while flying. This really depends on the speed of your hard drive or SSD. If you have an SSD or NVMe, you can probably have this on comfortably with no real difference in FPS. Extended distance scaling is rather interesting in that it has a huge impact on VRAM usage and I would assume having this higher renders in higher detailed objects from further away. If you drive around really fast and notice lots of popping, you may want to turn this up to maybe halfway or even all the way, but the FPS impact of these experimental settings is not completely known. Finally, frame scaling mode. This is basically the dynamic resolution of the game. Anything below 1x is making the game render at a lower resolution and then blowing it up, and anything above 1x is rendering the game at a much bigger resolution and then scaling it back down, giving you much better visual clarity and quality, but of course coming at a huge FPS cost. It's something like DSR, but not really AI powered. Anyways, with all of these settings gone through, I'll apply changes and I'll need to restart the game in order for changes to take place. Then I'll quickly do a benchmark once again in single player in the same location. 
Something to make note of is that yes, I am benchmarking in single player, you can expect a huge FPS difference between single player and multiplayer. Your settings for one may be completely different for the other, so you may have a completely separate online and offline experience, depending on how you want the game to look and feel. And as you can see already, an average of over 100 FPS to 110 FPS, which is already a huge improvement looking this way, almost 120 this way, 115, 110. That's awesome. It's already a huge improvement just by changing the in-game graphics settings. Of course, if you need any extra performance out of the game, you can, of course, change the resolution scaling on that advanced graphics tab to pull even more out of the game, assuming you already have everything on as low as possible. I don't exactly have the most expensive brand new system, but 1080 Ti is still pretty good, really punches above its class. And yeah, other than that, if you still need extra FPS, do remember to check the description down below for Windows optimization guides, Windows 10, Windows 11, and an NVIDIA optimization guide as well for both 10 and 11. There's a whole bunch of information down there, and if I ever need to add anything to this, you'll also find that down in the description below, and maybe in a pinned comment down as well. But anyways, that's really about it. Thank you all for watching, my name's been Techno Behavior Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.